Could two AEW wrestlers be frustrated with their position within All Elite Wrestling, leading to some exits in the near future? Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. And we're going to talk about two names that possibly are a little bit frustrated with their current position within AEW. One being the former TNT champion Miro. The other being Andrade Al Idolo. Certainly a name that's been talked about a lot recently with Ric Flair wrestling his last match. Now, this is quite interesting because this past Friday night on Rampage, a newcomer to the promotion was granted a champion championship eliminator match against current interim AEW world champion John Moxley. Now that individual was Mance Warner, who of course is well known on the independent wrestling scene through companies like GCW, MLW. He was also at the Ric Flair's last match. He won the Bunkhouse, what was it called? Bunkhouse Battle Royale. Um, he was part of that uh, JCP promoted event a couple of weekends ago. However, to the audiences watching at home that don't keep up, of course, with the independent wrestling scene, possibly, Warner may have felt like a random opponent for John Moxley to face when several other contracted stars could be put in that position to earn a future championship opportunity. This seems to be how former TNT champion Miro is also feeling about the situation as he took to Twitter and asked, quote, who's this guy that is fighting for the title? The AEW star could have found the answer by texting a colleague or using an internet search engine. However, he still appears that he wanted to ask the question to emphasize that Warner is essentially an unknown character to casual AEW viewers. The notion that Miro is frustrated with his position in AEW though doesn't end there you could say well oh, and that's conjecture you're reaching a little bit there and maybe I am however after a Twitter user commented on the post and asked quote are you still in AEW it seems you had it better in WWE Miro would go on to like that tweet now, earlier in the year, Miro signed a new four-year contract extension with AEW, which will keep him with All Elite Wrestling until at least, at the very least, early 2026. In an interview with What Culture shortly after he re-signed with the company, Miro explained why he preferred All Elite Wrestling over WWE at the time. However, like many names in AEW, Miro may be considering or reconsidering his future options now that, of course, Vince McMahon has resigned, retired from the company, and other people like John Laurinaitis have also exited WWE with Triple H, Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan now holding the majority of the power within WWE. This is what he said, quote, It's always going to be the freedom, Miro said when asked why he chose to stay in AEW. Whenever anybody asks me what is the difference here, it's the freedom. You don't have to set yourself in a lower standard because that's what I thought the other place was. They let you lower your standard in order to fit their mold, which here, it's not like that. You have a style, you go out there, you do your style to your best, and that's what makes professional wrestling so much better because you see different clashes of style, different styles clash in the ring. Now, it continues uh, with Miro now doing an interview with Renee Paquette, the former Renee Young, Renee Paquette, on her The Sessions podcast. And Miro has seemingly indicated or so he shed some light as to what his future might hold for him once his current AEW deal expires. This is what he had to say on the podcast with Renee Paquette. Quote, I think after this contract, I thought I was going to be done. I can go more. It depends. I feel great. I feel my body is getting better and better. It's not hurting especially now with working like I said just having a match once a week your body can go so much longer as I mentioned, he signed a new four-year deal with Tony Khan's promotion in March, which is set to keep him to the company, with the company rather, until early 2026. And it's quite interesting because he's only actually wrestled three times since putting pen to paper on his new deal. His last in-ring outing came at the inaugural AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door pay-per-view back in June, where he competed in that four-way match to crown the first ever AEW All-Atlantic Champion. Ultimately, that match was won by Pac. It's quite interesting, this Miro situation. We'll move on to Andrade Al Idolo in a second, but let's talk about Miro first. Miro's um, AEW trajectory is so bizarre because when he came in 2020, I believe it was in August of 2020, he signed with, um, or September of, of, of 2020, and he was involved in the best man gimmick with Kip Sabian. It didn't work. It was just, it just did not work. 
Eventually, Kip Sabian gets hurt. He turns on Kip Sabian. He becomes the Redeemer. He gets the gimmick that really works. He's cutting these great promos. He's being serious. He's an animal. TNT champion. There has not been a better TNT champion since Miro had the championship. There have been good TNT champions throughout his tenure. Cody Rhodes, the late Brody Lee, Miro. But the recent TNT champions have been nowhere near. And... You know, frankly, again, in terms of recent memory, Miro had the best TNT Championship reign by far. The the, the bout, the, the championship felt like it meant something. Now, not so much. Maybe that can happen with Wardlow holding the title. I don't know. But the Sammy Guevara, Scorpio Sky stuff, it just didn't work. Miro did a really good job building that title up, only for it to be messed around with constant flip-flopping of, of title reigns and just just the general mess that has been the TNT Championship. And now, granted he was off of television for a while because of an injury, had a hamstring injury um, when he faced Brian Danielson at full gear uh, last year. He was injured at the time, took some time off. By all accounts, he recovered from the injury fairly quickly, but as is the case of AEW, there's so much going on and the roster is so big that once you f sort of fall out the system, it's kind of difficult to get you back in because there's so much going on all the time. But I do understand his concerns, and I do think they are concerns that are shared by other people on the roster as well. AEW has an absolutely loaded and talented roster, and frankly, a bloated roster. This is an issue, and there are. this is something that I've said since day one of AEW. There will come a time where people will be unhappy with their spot. There will come a time where people think they deserve to be on television more. There will come a time where people are un unhappy with their creative, unhappy with their direction. That's pro wrestling. That's not a fault of AEW. That's not a fault of WWE when it happens. Could they do better with the talent? Yes. Should they do better with the talent? Yes. When you see someone like Miro and he's not on TV all the time or he's not majorly involved, you do because that's, that's that. Why? Why? Maybe because Tony Khan has his eyes fixed on other things. Maybe because Tony Khan doesn't really know what to do with Miro. Sometimes it's just not working out. They do need to go to another company. They do need to do something else. I'm not saying that's going to be the case with Miro. Miro, didn't he just confront, was it Brody King um, on uh, on Dynamite previously? So um, I think they've got something planned for that. I mean, he was wearing sunglasses at the time, Miro. I wouldn't be shocked if he joins the House of Black. I don't think that's the best thing for him, to be honest. But it looks like he's going to be somehow tied in with that faction or doing something against that faction facing Brody King, which should be fun. But I can understand his frustration. Every pro wrestler thinks they're the best pro wrestler in the world. And Miro is no different. And Andrade Aurelio is no different. Let's talk about Andrade before we circle back to Miro because the Twitter activity of Andrade Aurelio uh, kind of does um, lead in to also what Andrade Aurelio uh, is feeling right now. So recently a Twitter user uh, tweeted out their displeasure with the booking of Miro. Though uh, so through some digging rather in Miro's like tweets, you would see that the former AEW TNT champion liked the tweet, seemingly agreeing with it. At the end of the tweet, they also added the same displeasure is also being felt towards the booking of Andrade Al Idlo in AEW. Well, now now it appears rather that too uh, he too Andrade has liked the tweet in question. Now, after getting his release from WWE, Andrade signed with AEW and debuted. Um, it was just before Double or Nothing, I believe. He debuted on an edition of Dynamite. It might have been, was it the first Dynamite back with a crowd prior to Double or Nothing? And he was paired with Vicky Guerrero. That didn't work uh, at all. He was paired with Chavo Guerrero, which is a short-term option because Chavo was going to film Young Rock. He went away and then... Chavo had his issues with Tony Khan, and now he's had Jose the assistant, which is fine. But even he, like Miro, at times has felt directionless or kind of shoehorned into stuff. He had the Andrade Hardy family office, which was everything just felt like we've got we've signed Andrade, but we're not really sure what to do. We'll, we'll find something for him to do. And Andrade, to be honest with you, is probably better off not in AEW, not because AEW is a bad company, not because. You know, his creative's terrible. His creative's not great. and But he's he's doing other stuff outside of AEW that puts him in a better light and is probably more important. He, of course, that was a train wreck, Ric Flair's last match. That match, go back and watch it. It's terrifying because Ric Flair, he passed out. At the end of it, he says to Andrade, I passed out. And because he's 73 years of age and he's bleeding and he's got a pacemaker and he's got blood thinners and he's got a vertigo problem. I mean, the, the list is endless of what's wrong with Ric Flair. That was a, that was a train wreck, but... 
for what it's worth, people were talking about Andrade being involved in a match and an event in the main event that made a lot of money, that had a lot of people talking about it. Andrade in Mexico does very, very well when he does stuff with AAA. He was meant to defeat Kenny Omega for the AAA Mega Championship until they changed plans at the last minute at the request of AEW because they wanted to keep Omega strong for eventually when he dropped the championship to, to Hangman Page. That, that was that was the plan with the AAA Mega Championship, and AAA went along with uh, AEW's wishes at that time. Um, he was just involved this past weekend in Puerto Rico. Once again, he was with, with uh, Ric Flair. Ric Flair got into that fight with Carlos Colon on the outside, and it was these guys in their 70s beating the hell out of each other. But Andrade was featured in. And he doesn't feel that important in AEW as he does outside of AEW. So I can understand his frustration there, but I think a lot of these people... You know, they, they got released from WWE uh, for whatever reason. And make no mistake, Miro, when he was Rusev, and Andrade El Idolo, when he was Andrade in, in WWE, weren't being used great either. It's not to say that the grass was so much greener in WWE because it wasn't. But sometimes in pro wrestling, it always appears that the grass is greener on the other side, in the unknown. So when they're in WWE and it's not going great for them, they go, I'm going to go to AEW because the grass is greener there. They go there and they get more freedom and they can do somewhat what they want and they can take outside booking. So ultimately, they're happier than they were in WWE, but they still feel like they should be doing more. And now the grass appears to be greener in WWE again because it's the unknown. It's Triple H in charge of creative. It's Triple H in charge of, of talent relations. So once again, they think, oh, maybe I'll be booked better in WWE. And that's not to say that they would be. If Miro went back to WWE, would it be any different? He wouldn't be doing angles with Bobby Lashley and Lana kissing each other every five seconds, but would it be a ton better? We don't know. If Andrade went back to WWE, would it be better? I don't know. I, I really don't. He had success, obviously, with Triple H. Certainly, Andrade he was the NXT champion, and his booking, once he got caught up to the main roster, was not good either. So maybe they are angling for that. Are they going to go anywhere anytime soon? I doubt it. Miro just signed a four-year contract. He's not going anywhere, clearly. AEW honors their contracts, and I don't suspect that Miro will leave. Andrade, out of the two that could possibly leave maybe Andrade I don't know what his contract situation is as I mentioned he debuted around a year ago I don't know the length of his deal he's got other stuff going on outside so again I wouldn't be shocked if he forced to move out because he's got other stuff going on that's not to say he would go back to WWE either that's just to say that he's got other stuff going on but again this isn't a slight towards AEW this is just this is pro wrestling that it's not going to be the honeymoon forever for AEW. There's going to be talent more than Cody Rhodes. And even Cody Rhodes being the first talent that went from AEW back to WWE. There will be others. And there'll be more names that go from WWE to AEW. That is pro wrestling. If you were a fan of pro wrestling in the 90s or the 80s, when WCW and WWE around, that happened all the time. It will happen with WWE and AEW. There'll be frustrations with people in WWE under Triple H, under this new regime. There'll be frustrations in AEW under Tony Khan. AEW roster is too big. And sometimes they are struggling for creativity on some of their characters. And Tony Khan's formula is kind of figured out at this point, And they need to change some things. But that's pro wrestling. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with both of them. As I mentioned, Miro, not going anywhere anytime soon. Andrade... That's an interesting one. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but nevertheless, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling News 365, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.